The five children you're about to meet are extraordinary. Five little heroes who put themselves in harm's way to save their mother's life from an armed intruder. What makes this story even more heartbreaking, the armed intruder, was their dad. We all know the shocking statistic, one woman killed by her partner every week in Australia. But somehow it takes the personal, harrowing stories to drive home the full horror of this national tragedy. Usually the stories are told by women, stories of survival and resilience. We never hear from the children, the silent victims of family violence. But tonight, the story from the eyes of five incredibly courageous kids. It's a case unlike any other, face to face with their father who's armed with a rifle while their mother is on the brink of death. Five children who show courage and smarts far beyond their years to save their mother's life. When I was I if not for the bravery of these five young children, they would not have a mother to visit. We'll be out soon, hey? All done, no more operations, they're all done. We're done. To Rachel Moore, each in their own way is her hero, for together they saved her life. Jaden, 14. Cameron, 12. Ten-year-old Kaylee, and the babies, four-year-old Zane and his two-year-old sister, Samantha. You don't think about it, um, you just do it. Mum said to Cameron, get the ambulance or I'm gonna die. We thought when she was in hospital it was all okay and it was great and fine, but it really wasn't. She was fighting for her life, she died <coughs> nearly five times. five times. She died five times, they bring her back. I say one day I'm gonna make you I think a lot of miracles happened that night. I'm so proud of them, aren't you? <laughs> Amazingly. The night of April 11 last year, Daryl Fields has one thing on his mind, to kill his ex-partner and the mother of his children, Rachel Moore. There's no doubt about it, I was dead. Hunted. Daryl came through the door with a gun. Trapped. He'd cornered me. And shot. Just went bang. By the man who says he loves her. The most scared I've ever been in my life. Her young children witness it all. Don't do it, Daddy. And he said, um, you don't have a dad anymore. And transform into superheroes. And it was choking my mum, so I hit him across the temple and my brother took over. To save their mum's life. Where did you find the strength to do that? And the physical strength? I don't know. Finding the inner courage to overcome domestic violence like you've never seen before. Samantha, come here. <laughs> Rachel wants to share her family's horrific experience because with domestic violence as rampant as it is, their story could be anyone's. Hey. In that moment, what did you think was going to happen to you? Yeah, I thought he was going to kill me. I knew I was going to be shot. I knew I had to take the bullet. And I knew it had to be me because I didn't want him anywhere near my kids. As it is for so many, the beginning was so different. Rachel says she fell in love with a gentle, patient man and for seven years they were happy. He listened about the things I was upset about and talked me through and um, was genuinely an absolutely lovely person and no one would tell you different. But three years ago, Daryl's relationship with Rachel imploded when he viciously attacked her. A victim of domestic violence in a previous relationship, Rachel immediately threw Daryl out. I could see all the kids' faces and I just said, I promise, that's it. Never again, I promised you, never. For the next two years, their separation was amicable, Rachel raising her young family on her own. Until one night, something snapped inside Daryl. Drove home and went in, turned the TV on for them, was going to start running baths and all that, and that's when I heard him. I knew it was him. 
screech into the driveway. What do you think prompted him to attack you that night? Alcohol. Rachel rushes her children to a bedroom. In the dreadful world of a woman who has experienced domestic violence before, she knows what's coming, or at least thinks she does. Did you have any idea the extent no. of the attack? I knew it was going to be worse than the last one. In my head I knew because it always gets worse. And I knew it was going to be bad, but I did not expect him to have a gun. In no realm of existence could I ever believe that he would have a gun. Huddled, terrified in the room with their mum are Jaden, Cameron, Kaylee, Zane and Samantha. We heard him going through the house. Like we could hear his feet stomping on the ground. Like we could hear him walking through, and it was really scary. He just looked at me like a psychopath, just sort of like this sort of stuff, and I thought he was possessed. He didn't look like him. His eyes were black. Daryl was dead drunk and murderous. He just stood at the door for a bit and then he pulled up a gun. Um, and he had, he had that aimed at mum for a while. I remember saying, oh God, in my mind. And we were all like screaming and stuff and telling him not to shoot and stuff like that. But he did anyway. He didn't think twice. He lifted the gun, cocked it, put a bullet in and straight away just went, I could see it, he wanted to kill me, he wanted me dead. And he didn't even hesitate, he just pulled it up and shot and mum just fell backwards. Daryl's shot hit Rachel, shattering her left arm. I just recall putting my hands down and trying to push up, but there was nothing. Did you know that you'd been hit in the arm? Not really. Uh, I knew that I got it. It just felt like I'd been punched and I couldn't work out also why I was slipping, but now I know it was blood, my own blood. Just imagine the terror in this room that night. But instead of being crippled by their fear, Rachel's five children literally leapt into action. As one, their only thought was to save their mother's life and without any regard for their own safety, they instinctively mobilised into the most extraordinary little army. I actually thought that's it. I thought it might have been the end for the whole family or my brothers and sisters as well, maybe. And to have those thoughts flash through your mind, what was that like? I guess my body just decided I'm going to do what I can to stop this, no matter what I have to do. What did you end up doing? Well, when he had the gun pointed at my mum, I ran forward and elbowed him and disarmed him. Cameron's was the first heroic act that night. As Daryl went to reload, Cameron disarmed him, taking on a grown man twice his size. But there's a little you need to know about these little heroes. I don't want to go to the bigger class. I want to stay here with my friends. Cameron, older brother Jaden. I have to share a room with Sam. And his sister Kaylee are child actors. No, I want bacon and eggs. One, two. One, two and as part of their acting lessons, Rachel's three eldest also trained in fight choreography and martial arts. Here you go. That's it. How did you know to disarm him? We do fight choreography lessons for our acting. And I guess it was from that I got taught like two weeks early, I think. I'm sure you never thought you'd actually have to do it in real life, did you? No. No, not at all. Having disarmed Daryl, Cameron had the foresight to then throw away the gun. But inside, Daryl was still trying to kill Rachel. He just didn't count on Jaden. He went over to her and grabbed her by the foot and dragged her over to the other side of the room. 
um, and then sat on her and started choking her and um, like trying to rip her eyes out and stuff. I just hopped on his back and started choking him and I beat him a couple times, I think. And then um, Cameron ran in after he'd hid the gun and punched him in the side of the head and he landed on me. So I couldn't get out or anything because it's too heavy, so I just put him in a chokehold. In the midst of this mayhem, four-year-old Zane knows he must protect his little sister from the violence. He takes two-year-old Samantha and hides her under the bed. That bit breaks my heart. Why does that break your heart? He's so little that he had to do that. Were you at all aware of the, the great fight that no. the kids were undergoing on your behalf? No idea. Apparently I had passed out once I was shot and the next thing I remember was his eye gouging me obviously and feeling their hands and them stopping it. And then that's all I remember until my daughter picked up my arm and me. And I just remember her, what I feel like was she was carrying me, carrying me outside and hiding me. Now it's Kaylee's turn to act. This tiny 10-year-old draws on an incredible strength of body and mind to spirit her mum to safety. Somehow she knows too she has to stop her bleeding and so bandages her mother's shattered arm. I got her far distance away from him so that if he went back for her that the boys could stop him. And you know, your mum had a really terrible injury. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you to be wrapping up her arm and, and trying to help her when you could see all that blood? It was quite disgusting and scary. I thought that she would um, die before the ambulance got there because they took a long time. Did you ring them? I rang the cops and... Um, yes. Pardon? The police. police. The police. And um, I said, my mum's been shot. And she said, darling, um, what's wrong? And I'm like, my mum got shot. And then I gave it to Jaden because I knew that he would be able to do something. So he got onto it and told her. So then she got all the people. After that frantic phone call to police, all that Rachel and the kids could do was wait and hope. Hope that Daryl Fields wouldn't attack again. And hope too that Rachel could survive her massive blood loss. Time after time, a desperate Cameron ran down the driveway looking for police, looking for anyone to help. And I could just feel the wind pushing against my hair as I pulled down the driveway. And I kept on running back up to check on mum and down and up. And then found them and I said, down here, down here, come on, down here. And my mum's down there, she's been shot. Um, don't worry, I disarmed him. It's uh, The gun's under the balcony. It's all safe to go up. And they said, oh, we need to make procedure calls, stuff like that. And they started to interview me and stuff. Was that difficult when you knew your mum needed help so, so quickly and so I, desperately? I just wanted to run back up there and just... I kept on like, it was hard for me to sit there and there knowing my mum's in trouble up there. What did you do? Did you try and convince them to let you go? Yeah, I just really... I thought that they'd interview me and I could run back up to see her. But that was the last time I got to see her for a couple of weeks. What's happening? All right, he's unconscious. I knocked him out with my fist, all right? So, so in that state of terror, where did they get the presence of mind to do what they did? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I would have the guts to do what they did. I really don't think I would have. So what do you think drove that? Their love for me. Loving me. I just wanted them gone. I just wanted them out of there. But now I thank God they were there. I thank God for my children, for saving my life. Rachel lost two thirds of her blood by the time she was taken to hospital and very nearly lost her arm too. So that news, what was that like for you? Scary. 
the biggest part was not the vanity, not the, oh my God, I won't look nice. It was how am I going to hold my daughter? Yeah. How am I going to run the house with all the children and one arm? Just three weeks after being so shot and after 15 her. long, complicated operations to keep her arm, that artery kept pumping. Rachel still has the fighting spirit her children so clearly inherited. Do you expect to get full usage of your hand? The doctors say I'll get this, 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 but I know I'll get more. It's unfathomable what Rachel and her children have had to bear. And while they say it's getting better, of course, they're still struggling to understand how such a violent act could come from someone who is meant to love them, someone they love so dearly. Jaden, yeah. when you said you, it's getting better, really, is it? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of sucks that, um, because he was a good dad, um, yeah. beforehand. We, um, be able to go and, like, build stuff in the backyard. But, um, can't really do that now. Yeah. It's tough, isn't it? And he used to take us to, um, places and... He was really fun and nice, but when he did that, it was kind of sad. Yeah. So you never thought he was capable of doing this then? No. Are you guys OK? Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> well, can I get you some tissues and some water? Will that make you feel better? I'm all right. Yeah. I think they're now even more older than they should be. The one thing I always wanted for the kids was to be young for as long as you can. It was ripped away from them. He took it all. And so what's in its place? Fear. It's there every night. We all have it. Um, also, just... They lost their dad as well. They lost the man that they thought was strong and would always look after them. How do you explain that conflict of emotion? How do you explain that somebody who does love them can in fact do that? Jealousy and rage and that alcohol fuels violence. That's best I can. I don't know how to explain it because I don't know. I don't know how he did that. <sighs> you can't. Now For now, this young family can live easier knowing Daryl Fields is behind bars. He's pleaded guilty to attempted murder and when he's sentenced, it's expected he'll be there for a long time. While it may be hard to ever reconcile how their father could be so dangerous, these little heroes have also learned of the incredible courage they each possess and the power they have to break the cycle of domestic violence. Do you think they were empowered by what they were able to achieve that night? Council said that they're just they're coping beyond what you'd think. They just showed strength and um, a bond with each other that no one was going to break up. Do you think that your mum would be alive if you weren't there in the house that night? Probably not, because he would have been able to reach for the second bullet or maybe he would have just shot her and she, with that one, she would have died. So what's it like to know that you saved your mum's life? No, I feel pretty good. I feel very happy that she's alive and she made it. I don't really think about me saving her life. I just think that she's alive and that's all that matters. I say one day I'm gonna make you proud. 
Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.